users, particularly for new users, to understand the digital selective calling features of the ICOM M802 and also to understand what digital selective calling is on the HF frequency bands. First and foremost, you must have an MMSI number programmed into your ICOM M802. This is your maritime, excuse me, your safety identification number. If you've gotten this number from Boat US, it will not work properly for international operations. If you're a US citizen or your US flag vessel, get this number through your through the Federal Communications Commission. If you're a foreign vessel, get it through your radio communications authority in your country of origin. When you press the power button on the M802, the first thing you're going to see on the display is your MMSI number. If you do not see this, you do not have it programmed in. There is a function that shows you how to program it in as well. And that's as simple as that. It shows up every time you turn the radio on. The second thing you must have to make this work effectively is you must have a GPS connected to the radio. You'll notice the GPS display has been in all of my videos. This is very important. If you do not have your GPS connected, you can spend quite some time fiddling with the dials and pressing buttons to try to enter in your GPS position. And if your vessel is going down, if you're on fire, if you have an extreme medical emergency, uh, or whatever the reason is you're sending a distress call for, probably aren't going to have time to do that. And even if you do, you're probably going to be stressed enough that you're going to get the numbers wrong. Connect GPS to your M802. Personally, I recommend a separate dedicated GPS receiver just for your DSC radios. This would connect to your VHF DSC radio as well as your HF DSC radio. F radio as well. And I do have a separate dedicated Garmin 76 mounted permanently at the nav station, wired up to 12 volt DC, as well as AA batteries inputted to it. This sends my GPS signal to both of my DSC radios. Having, an MS, having the MMSI number programmed into your radios and having the GPS connected to your radios is going to allow you to have a fairly decent distress signaling capability from these radios that will complement a uh, EPIRB. I'm going to show you two different ways to signal a distress using your ICOM M802. And before I do this, I'm going to make an extreme caution that nobody, nobody does this test with their radio. Unless, of course, they're sinking or on fire or actually has a distress. You should never, ever do this test. I have removed the antenna cabling from my radio. Uh, I'm using RG214 double silver-plated double-shielded cable and I'm going into a professional commercial grade bird dummy load. I also have a, a, a high sensitivity uh, HF spectrum analyzer here monitoring my uh, radiation signal making sure I'm down into the microvolt or microwatt range meaning anything beyond this boat probably within about 50 feet of me here would never be able to receive this signal. If you do not do this, you're going to be sending a false distress message, and I really, really don't want you to. So, un so please just watch this video, but only use the distress functions if you're actually under distress. Thank you. One of the controversies surrounding the M802 and its DSC functions is that people believe that it has to be in some sort of DSC mode in order to constantly be monitoring the six international distress DSC frequencies. That is not true. The radio has a built-in separate receiver that constantly monitors those six international distress frequencies. As long as you have a separate DSC receive antenna hooked up to the radio as it's shown in the instructions and is recommended by all marine radio installers. If and when you do need to use the DSC functions, particularly if you need to send a distress message, that built-in distress or excuse me, built-in DSC receiver is going to be waiting to hear an acknowledgement of your distress message. The main unit, the main receiver connected to your main antenna, such as your backstay, is going to be tuned to the voice frequency that corresponds to the frequency band that your distress message was sent out on. When using a, excuse me, when sending a simple distress message by flicking up this trap door, pressing and holding that button for five seconds, when sending that type of message, it's going to go out on 
uh, kilohertz. And the main unit will be receiving, or excuse me, will be monitoring 8291.0 kilohertz. That is the 8 megahertz international distress and safety calling frequency. The transmission will take about 35 seconds or so, and then it will wait about three and a half minutes while it waits and listens and listens and listens, and it's constantly scanning these six international frequencies with the DSC receiver, and you're going to hear the static out of the radio because you're going to have your volume turned up as well, and you're going to be listening to the 8 megahertz channel 8291. And then about after three and a half minutes, if there's no response and no acknowledgement, the radio will send out another distress message. It'll try it again. And it'll do this five times for you. You don't have to do anything other than pressing that one button once. That's all you have to do. That's why they call it a simple distress message. You'll notice, though, that it doesn't change channels or frequencies. It just does this on the 8 megahertz band. The regular distress message is one that allows you to select all six international distress frequencies. And I'm going to show you these in sequence here, but just so you know, it doesn't transmit on 8, 12, 16, and then it goes like 2, 4, 6, and then back to 8, 12, and 16. And it doesn't, it, it does that in sequence, but it doesn't do it instantly. It'll transmit on the 8 megahertz channel for approximately 35 seconds, wait about three and a half minutes, then it switches to the 12 megahertz channel, transmits for about 35 seconds, waits for about three and a half minutes, then it changes to 16 megahertz, does the same thing, transmits, waits for three and a half minutes, then it goes to two megahertz, does the same thing, transmits, then waits, then it goes to four, and then it goes to six, then it goes back to eight. The entire process going through all six transmit and receive cycles will take about 24 to 25 minutes. And then it'll keep going until you get an acknowledgement or until you cancel. While the manual is a little misleading or a little confusing on this point, I want to make sure you understand. A simple distress message, you press and hold this button once, transmits in the 8 megahertz band. While it's, while, after it's transmitting, the radio, the main unit of the radio, will be receiving at 8291 kilohertz, upper sideband, for a voice communications, allowing you to communicate by voice to any rescuers or any responders to your signal while the DSC receiver is continuing to scan for a response to your DSC acknowledgement. In a regular distress sequence, which you'll need to use the menu function, the menu button to select, it will go through all six frequencies, all six international distress frequencies, starting with 8, then moving to 12, 16, then to 2, 4, and 6 megahertz. And that whole process would take approximately 24 to 25 minutes that the independent, dedicated, built-in DSC receiver in the, I, excuse me, in the ICOM M802. It scans all of the distress and safety frequencies continuously all the time the radio is turned on. You don't have to press any buttons, you don't have to program it to do anything, it is automatic. But you must have, you must have a separate DSC antenna connected to the DSC receiver jack in order for that function to work very important, you can still transmit a DSC message. You can still transmit a distress message using your DSC button, whether it be a simple distress call or the regular distress call. All transmission takes place through your main antenna, and all voice communications takes place through your main antenna. The only thing the DSC antenna does is it is used for just those six international distress signaling frequencies for DSC communications only. I was listening to the 20 meter maritime mobile band. I had a distress. I would flip this trap door up and I'm going to press and hold this button. The radio is now transmitting its DSC call You'll notice the frequency displayed is 8414.5. Power output reading is maximum. Again, I'm transmitting into a dummy load with double shielded cabling, and I'm monitoring to make sure that there's no radiation from my vessel. In a few seconds, the transmission will end, and the radio will go to its standby mode, where the DSC receiver will be monitoring for an acknowledgement 
the radio will show that and you'll also have voice communications capability on 8291. You notice the display shows distress waiting for ACK, that's acknowledgement, and you'll notice that it's on 8290, excuse me, 8291.0. I'm going to turn the volume up. Again, you're hearing nothing because I have no antenna connected to it. This radio would continue to do this for more than another three minutes before the transmission would start again. Now I'm going to press the cancel button over here and when I press the cancel button it's going to send out a distress cancellation message and the radio is going to go back into what they call the DSC mode. Now the radio is currently transmitting even though you can't see it I'm going to zoom out and show you my panel meter here. Oops, I wasn't quick enough. And now it shows of course distress canceled. Should you desire to send a 6 frequency DSC distress message, simply lifting and holding this button will not do it. That will only send your distress message on the 8 MHz band. You need to select the DSC button here and then hit set and we'll go through it. It's very simple. Once you understand the steps, it's very, very simple. Simple. You hit DSC, set, verify that you show distress here. If you don't show distress, turn the knob to show distress. I always leave mine there. Then you simply hit enter three times, one, two, three, and then you lift the trap door and you hit the button. You notice the display says six frequency, and I press and hold this button again. And you notice that the radio is calling distress, and again it's starting out at eight megahertz, full power operation. and after 35 seconds it has stopped sending it is now waiting for acknowledgement just like it was before in the simple dis excuse me in the simple distress call listening the main receiver at 8291 the DSC receiver scanning for an acknowledgement to your DSC call the radio will continue to do this I'm going to turn the volume down but notice when I do that you still hear the beeping that's normal that is natural that's what the radio is supposed to do the volume just adjusts the speaker volume for the static. Excuse me, hopefully you'll be hearing something other than static, but again, I'm not connected to an antenna. This will radio will continue to do this for another three minutes, then it'll switch to the 12 megahertz band. It'll start this process on 12, then 16, and then 2, 4, 6, and then back to 8 again. And you'll notice it's just changed to the 12 megahertz position. It is now transmitted at full power at 12.577.0. And it will continue to do this for about another 20, 30 seconds. Then we'll go into the receive mode and we'll stand by at the 12.290 uh, voice frequency. Here we are standing by at 12.290, again waiting for another three and a half minutes. And again, it will do this on 12, then it will switch to 16, then it will switch to 2 four, six, and then back to eight, and it will keep going around and around five complete cycles, or until you hit the cancel button, which I'm going to do right now. And it's transmitting a DSC cancellation, which is all of about eight, ten seconds, something like that. It's not quite as uh, lengthy as the uh, DSC signal itself. And there it is. We have now canceled our DSC distress. I hope you enjoy this uh, uh, small and brief explanation. I hope I didn't go into too much detail and for you. Thank you very much. Enjoy your ICOM M802.